So, do you want to know how to really, truly leverage an SBA loan to its highest potential when buying a business? How to create a cheat code out of an SBA loan so it will work to your advantage? Well, stay tuned because in today's video, I'm going to give you three pro tips from a business broker and how to maximize an SBA loan when buying a business. Let's get to it. everybody, welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender, helping you buy and scale a profitable business. If you are a small business owner looking to increase or diversify your wealth, or an employee or corporate executive wanting to get out of the rat race by purchasing a profitable business, you are in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell and you'll be notified every Thursday when I got new content coming out. So what exactly is an SBA loan? Well, an SBA loan is the product of a bank, but the difference between an SBA loan and a non-SBA loan is that the SBA loan is government backed. It's guaranteed by the Small Business Administration, like an insurance policy, up to 75% of the value of the loan. That's what makes the difference. So it is government backed and is specifically designed, among other things, to buy a business. So for you to buy the cash flow stream from a seller at a very low injection point with very low down payment or equity injection. What makes the SBA loans so suitable for buying a business is that they provide um, great amortization tables, um, offer opportunities for multiple capitalization tables from the buyer's group in a way that makes sense. So, um, so here are some of the benefits of SBA loans as I see it. You can actually uh, buy up to 90, so up to 95% of the purchase price in some cases. Now I, I know I said in the past, that you need a minimum of 10% to play in the game. So 10% equity injection is what I always said. But now there are times in which a 5% down may be an option, given that there's a lot of things that kind of have to fall into place. For you to be able to have a 5 equity injection, so that means 50,000 on a million dollar purchase. So the, your global debt service coverage ratio must be in line of at least 1.25 or better, the higher the better. And then the business itself, the cash from the business of the business debt service coverage ratio must be excellent. If it is excellent, there are multiple ways from a buyer to actually diminish their cash position. And I've seen it in some cases that the, 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 the buyer comes in with 5% or they may have the 10%, but they don't need it. In a strong cash flow deal, you got 10% from the buyer. The lender may say, I want the seller to carry. And the reason why sellers carry a portion of the purchase price is sometimes to mitigate, to lower the position on the deal from the lender if the lender is not comfortable on the deal, but that's not always the case. So in a situation in which it's a high confidence deal, high it's the, the, first of all, the business was priced right. If the business is priced right, the debt service coverage ratio will not be a problem. So you can actually, the benefit of an SBA, you can actually get up to 95% of the purchase price. You can also get a 10-year amortization table, which means that this is unheard of outside of SBA loans. If you're trying to go with a traditional commercial lender, non-SBA, you'd be lucky to get a seven-year or 84-month amortization table which means that the longer the, the, the table, the longer the span of time to pay, the lower your payment. If the lower your payment, the higher chances you have to meet the debt service coverage ratio, which means less cash out of your pocket every month and more cash in your pocket to run the business. That's as simple as that. So, and here's another thing that, so I would say number three would be less than dollar for dollar collateralization. That's very important you understand that. This is kind of a big deal because usually when you're buying a business and you're buying the cash flow stream, there will never be enough assets of the ones that you're purchasing 
to match dollar for dollar the loan that you're getting. Let me give you an example. Say, let's go back to the million dollar purchase and you have 10% or you can have 5%. So the lender is gonna come in with anywhere from 900,000 to 950,000 loan to value. So let's back up. What would be the ideal purchase price of a million dollar per a business it would be probably 3.3 times the seller discretionary earnings. So if you go by 3.3 times or so three, three and 300,000 is 900,000, a little over three, you know that a business like that, if the numbers are correct, it's gonna cash flow all day long and the service coverage is not gonna be a problem. So, but if the lender is gonna come up with a 900,000 to $950,000 loan and the furniture, fixtures and equipment on the balance sheet of the equipment that you're buying to justify the sales price are not gonna be there. Sometimes it may be 100,000. If it is a service-based business, definitely not gonna be there. So there's gonna be a gap. If you're closer to more asset-rich industries, you know, equipment, uh, rental, um, we're talking about deals with no real estate. If there is real estate, the, the real estate itself is collateralized, which is lenders love real estate above anything else. But if you're talking about a strictly assets and the balance sheet of a small corporation, you're gonna have your fit furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Your equipment rarely ever will go through a third of the purchase price. You may get $300,000, $400,000 worth of uh, equipment sitting on the balance sheet. And the thing about when you're buying a business and you're buying the assets, those assets, if you're doing an asset purchase agreement, will be, uh, you're going to get a step up basis. So you're going to be able to depreciate those assets unlike you would if you were buying the stock of a business. The stock purchase benefits the seller and asset purchase benefits the buyer. So number four, because of the SBA backed guarantee, SBA lenders are willing to take more risks on the deals that they would normally take if they was not associated with, associated with an SBA lender because of the 75% guarantee which means they give a more leeway. They have a higher threshold of, 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 of leniency as to how to approve the deal. When you have a non-SBA lender, they're gonna look more closely into the buyer requirements, including your management experience and net worth issues. So there are a lot of folks, and some of those have done dozens of videos when they talk about buyer requirements. There's, the management experience is always a gray area. It's always a circumstantial case for the buyer with the lender and the seller. So you'll never, you'll rarely ever have the exact management experience required to buy a business, which is a lender's guideline. I can try to figure out how to buy a business. Do not be stuck any longer. Let me help you. Let's connect. There are many intricate parts to buying a business and it's hard to go at it alone. You need a coach. I want to coach you through this process. Schedule a call with me, a complimentary call. All you have to do is reach out to me via email. My email address is always up here or at the description section of this video. Let's connect and let's talk. So, but when you have an SBA loan, the lender may look the other way if you don't have the exact management experience. Now, with the exception of cases where there are licensing requirements, like in the trades, you have to have a case, and that's a conversation for another video, so I'm not gonna get into that right now, but the lenders are always willing to take more risks if there is an SBA loan. So how to obtain an SBA loan? So as a business broker, this is really half of what I do is, you know, have the businesses or help the buyers procure the business purchase. And I have the resources and the contacts. I've just seen some of the interviews. I've probably worked with over 25 lenders myself. So I'm going to give you three tips, pro tips, on how to actually obtain and, and how to properly leverage the cheat code. So what is coming right now is the cheat code, how to actually best leverage an SBA loan. Pro tip number one, I strongly suggest to my students that befriend as many lenders as possible and I have them in my network and they are part of our group coaching program. Um, and get letters of support from at least two lenders because that turns you into a cash buyer. You might have heard this before, but you never go to a bank when you need money because when you need money, it's too late. The same applies to when you're buying a business. If the whole intent is for you to basically turn yourself into a cash buyer, nothing a broker likes better then talking to a broker representing a seller, then talking to a buyer that has got their act together. 
they have the buy box, they have the requirements. Clearly, they know what they're talking about. They sound like they know what they're talking about. They have a letter of support. They have a professional resume. They are anticipating every question that the broker is going to have. And chances are, if you present yourself in such a way, you don't need a proof of funds. Proof of funds is a problem that newbies have when you're trying to buy a business and you come across like you don't know what you're talking about when you're talking to brokers. So one of the ways to cure that is you start befriending and having relationships with the lenders and even having some of those deals vetted by a lender long before you need the lender. So number two, pro tip, okay, pay attention. Always pre-qualify the deal yourself before the, get, getting the lender involved. Well, how do we do that, you're asking? This is exactly what we do inside Business Acquisition Mastery. This is my group coaching program, an ever-growing group coaching program with students from all over the country. When we actually do deal analysis pre and post-mortem, we understand what's going on and uh, inside of what we, in the group, we have something that is called the deal analyzer. I'll get to that in a second. So... But pro tip number three is perform due diligence upfront long before you make an offer. So this will make actual due diligence a breeze. So let's go back to the number two about pre-qualifying the deal. So inside the deal analyzer, which is something exclusively inside of our group, with the deal analyzer, what we get is, by the way, before I get into that, the deal analyzer is a robust Excel workbook with over nine sheets and over 100 formulas long that I have developed over multiple years of asset testing and working with many buyers and sellers and putting deals together. You can take the financials straight from the seller and calculate the three-year average revenue in SDE. And I'm not just talking about interim financials. I'm talking how to interpret tax returns, 1120S, partnerships, the forms 1065, the 1065, the 1120S, or the 1120 for corporates or C-Cores, interpret that in a way that makes sense for you to actually analyze the revenue, the, the, the gross profit, minus the cost of goods sold, the operating expenses, and how to properly add the addbacks as per SBA guidelines. No pie in the sky addbacks from type of the sellers. So you, I, I'll show you exactly how you actually get true seller discretionary earnings or adjusted EBITDA to justify. So that's number one. Number two, calculate post debt service coverage ratio under multiple scenarios. 10% down, 5% down, seller carry, no seller carry, standby, no standby in the likes and under multiple different interest rates. Very important that you know that. All of those variables produce multiple offers and post debt service cash flow, which leads me to the next thing is it would be nice if you could calculate your cash on cash return, especially if you got investors involved. More and more, I'm, I'm hearing of situations in which buyers kind of group together and they want to pursue bigger deals, which makes sense. The bigger the deal, the more established the cash flow, the chances are that, that it's going to be a better investment overall than trying to get a business that is more of a startup under five years. We got businesses right now that we're pursuing in our group that are been around for 50 years. Those are local brands that are gonna be around for a long time, which are recession proof. You can also calculate cash on, as I say, cash on cash returns, um, cap rates if real estate is involved. Now, one thing you need to know about real estate, whenever you have a deal in which there is real estate involved and there's a cap rate calculation, which actually happens within our group, within this, this, this deal, you may be able to amortize this deal to from 10 to 25 years, depending on how the purchase price works and the overall, so long as it's 51%. And a lot of those calculations, it's, it's, it's one on one, case by case basis, which if you're not in the group, you're not gonna be privy to that. And last but not least, calculate your ideal offer based on industry specific multiples on available comparable sales of which I have access to specific software that let us do that. So result, all of that happens because the ability to be able to leverage up to 90 or 95% of the value of the business with an SBA loan. So what is the moral of the story? There are plenty of success stories that I have. Going through this rigorous process, in the last three weeks, three of my students got deals under contract, all pre-approved by lenders and moving on to um, due diligence. So let's start the conversation. If you wanna buy a business using an SBA loan, I can totally help you. Let's connect. For a limited time, I'm giving away my cash flow calculator and my buyer's checklist, two of the most requested documents I have 
in order to buy a business. Those are my complimentary gifts to you for subscribing to my channel. All you have to do is click on the links below and they are used to have.